So we're here at the ACS International School in Surrey for the Gold Hall Basketball Super Clinic that's taking place this January right here in the UK. I'm being joined by Alex Sarama. Did I get it right? You did. You Alex got it Sarama. Right. <laughs> He's only 20 years old. He set up this academy when he was 17 years old. Can't believe it. 17 years old. And this is one of, I'm telling you, it's the, one of the best academies you're going to see or find in the UK. And you're going to find out why. Talk to us about the Gold Hawks Basketball Academy. Absolutely. So, Gold Hawks Basketball Club started about three years ago. Uh, I was 17 when I started the club. Uh, and I really just wanted to brother. Stop. Did you just say you were 17 years old when That's you started correct. the club? So I was still studying at Sixth Form when I, when I started the whole program. Um, I was just really inspired to create something that would have a range of positive benefits for young players. I play myself from the age of uh, 11, played at the uh, National League level. Um, and I, I really thought that there should be a club in, in my area for kids that would really provide uh, players with opportunities to do something. Uh, and, and that's why we sort of got on the bed like this, where we're giving them opportunities and, and having top uh, people come over uh, and really just providing the best development, develop, developmental opportunities we can to, uh, to young players. Now, when I heard this was happening, my first instinct was, I mm. hope this camp is not just for American kids, yes, rich kids in, this, exactly, in Surrey that are attending this camp, mm -hmm. to, to this in clinic. But sure. then I was pleasantly surprised to get here and know that there's some British kids Absolutely. that are taking part. Why is it important to get those British kids yeah, important it's, it's in so, this camp? It's so important. Um, I mean, over 80% of the players here are from, uh, from England. We've had a lot of teams come from abroad, France, uh, Belgium, we've got eight different countries represented here, but obviously this is all about the British kids. And our number one thing at Goldhawks and my vision with the club is to really make us one of the top youth programs in the country. That's what our vision is, and obviously we're in year three now. We've got a six year plan, we're gonna to get to that by year six. But the young people in this country, uh, something that Drew was saying was about having role models uh, and seeing what it takes to make it. Um, all the hard work that you need to put in, um, and that's why getting these guys in and exposing British players uh, to, to the speakers we have in Alan, Drew and Spencer, uh, that's what we really need to drive forward the game in this, in this country. What has been some of the struggles for you to set up? Because I know as mm. anybody started a basketball club, Absolutely. I mean, when I was a bit younger, just mm -hmm. like you, I mean, in my 21, 21 years, I did a basketball academy and mm -hmm. I know it is hard, for especially sure. in the UK, to set up anything to do with basketball. Definitely. What are some of the struggles that you face? Definitely. I mean, many of our struggles are shared by, by clubs throughout the country. Mm. Uh, the normal things that you deal with, such as lettings, uh, costs, barriers to participation, they're all the same throughout the country. But as a club, what we've, what we've really done, uh, our sort of main emphasis uh, as, as a club has been uh, with, with the coaching side of it, and that's really where we, we've created our name for ourselves. Um, as a club, we have a really consistent program. We've uh, recently developed a curriculum, so every age group, uh, Gold Hawks team in National League or, or or whatever age group they are, they're following exactly the same program, uh, and I think that's something really important for clubs to do because often uh, you see different things being done at different age groups and the sort of isolation within within clubs. Uh, that's what I call it. And here at Gold Hawks, we we sort of have have the one club vision, uh, where there's a seamless progression of kids from the age of eight when they could join the club right up to 18s, um, and we've really developed a, such a comprehensive pathway. Uh, last year we, we got granted A status, uh, which is really big for the club getting an ACE academy. Obviously that led to a whole range of other opportunities such as free venue access. Um, and then following that we've just agreed a uh, university partnership with Royal Holloway, which is just up the road, to offer scholarship opportunities. So why I mention this is because it's, it means that when, whenever we have a kid that joins us, they can see the pathway that we have in the club and they can see that there aren't many other clubs that can offer that. And I think it's really important to have a comprehensive pathway to, to inspire players and sort of promote loyalty so that they know that when they're with us, uh, we'll be able to cater for all their needs. I mean, what you're doing here is absolutely amazing. Oh, but really also, that. in regards to, you're making it work here. Mm -hmm. Why is it that across the country or across mm -hmm. London, why is it that basketball hasn't been able to do that, do you think? Exactly. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, sort of a, a question that sort of varies, I think, on a club-to-club -club basis. 
um, sort of the, the main things which which the advice that we'd give to, to other clubs. I think it's so important to have uh, a, a youth program that's uh, really sort of has some sort of quality control over it. And you have someone that's able to, uh, to monitor your youth program and ensure there's some sort of consistency in each age group. Um, I really think that this, the, the passion and, and the desire to improve as, as coaches is something we really need in this country. Um, Today we've got we've got 30 coaches here, and over half of them are from other countries. And we've only got 15 British coaches here. Um, so I really think there needs a culture needs to be created in this country amongst British coaches uh, with an opportunity like this on their doorstep. Um, and there's so many opportunities to get better, you know, in this modern age of the internet. So many resources out there that you can use. And ultimately, we need better British coaches in order to develop better junior players, right? I was, um, I was sad to say that, you know, a lot of the coaches I know that have been involved mm -hmm. in the program, I mean, one of my coaches growing up is downstairs and I was very happy oh, to wow. see him, Heske, yeah, Benoit. Absolutely. Now, it would have been great to see more London coaches absolutely. here or more coaches from mm -hmm. around the country. Absolutely. Why don't they take up this opportunity, do you think? It's, 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 a, tough, it's a tough question. I mean, we really uh, publicised the event well for our very, very forms of social media and other communication channels. Um, I think it's also partly due to the fact that there isn't sort of a, a culture of attending clinics in this country. I mean, looking back, when I was sort of looking for inspiration to host this and how it should be done and ideas of best practice, I've only attended two coaching clinics ever in this country. Um, so there, there just isn't that culture amongst British coaches to go to something like this. Uh, and clinics are so important for things like networking that you get here. You could be having dinner with someone like Alan Stein, like the coaches that purchased our VIP package we'll be having tonight. And things like that are just so important for development. Uh, and you, you can't find sort of everything you need to know as a coach. You know that there's a lot out there on the internet. Um, so things like this are just fantastic. And hopefully as the years go on and, and coaches know this event takes place on a yearly basis, uh, they block, block it out in their diaries and, uh, and they'll be able to make it. Is it about time the British culture from basketball, of just being a lifestyle thing, mm -hmm. changes to actually knowing the sport so then the young people know it's not just about the NBA coming to town and we all buy the mm. ticket and watch the game, but also we need to know what basketball is and what that will mean to our society or communities in years to come? Absolutely, that's, that's a really good point you've just made, Benny. Um, I think why sort of knowing that lifestyle that's exactly what Drew and Allen will be doing today and they're going to be doing it again tomorrow. Um, they're actually showing players what it takes to you know, be the lifestyle, the lifestyle you need if you want to make it. You know, obviously there's, there's no guarantee you can, but Drew was saying you know, the kids that, that work hard and, and follow some of the programs he has with his company Pure Sweat, um, getting an insight to that at a young age, which is what we're hoping to do with this clinic, is so valuable. Um, so, you know, we, we've got some exciting ideas we're discussing with Drew and Alan at the moment, uh, but we really hope that other British kids throughout the whole country will be able to see, you know, what it takes, the lifestyle you need to lead uh, in order to make it to the top, and hopefully we'll be able to get more players, you know, making it, uh, and they'll have more role models to follow, because obviously we've just got Luau flying the flag for us at the moment. You never know what could happen in five, ten years with more British guys in the league, hopefully. Five, ten years for you, mm -hmm. Alex. Yeah. Where do you see the Goldhawks Academy? Um, so I'd like Goldhawks really to be one of the premier programmes in, in Europe and the continent. Um, typically, sort of looking at the, the master plan of a club, it, it normally takes about six years to, to get to a, a level that's, uh, that's really your peak, peak level. So we're in year three at the moment. Um, we've got a really a number of exciting initiatives we're following and, and one of, sort of my responsibilities at Goldhawks is to pursue uh, getting relationships with world leading brands. So recently we've uh, agreed a partnership with Spalding for our official kit supply and you know, what, a, what a sponsor to have with their close relationship with the NBA. Uh, and we've got Crossover here today who are our main uh, event partners and they're powering the clinic. Uh, and they're, they have an unbelievable service that they provide and they've been leading sort of the sport analytical scene for a number of years. So really want to continue to strive to develop world-class partnerships with the club, aligning ourselves with people such as Drew at Pure Sweat, Spencer with his icebox thing, and obviously Alan, we have a strong uh, partnership with his company, Stronger Team already, and I manage uh, all of uh, Alan's international operations and his events. 
So really we're going to continue to do that and hopefully we'll have a number of players that are, have gone on to achieve some good things at the professional level. That's really our goal and, and the youth level is what we're focused on. We, we're going to be pursuing some exciting things with, with some senior teams that we're going to be adding but our academy and our, our youth setup is, is really what drives our focus and, and captures all our attention really. Well I'm going to say something to you. Mm. What we would like to see at a drop is we would love to do something with you and Sporter, who also mm. sponsors the show, actually. Absolutely. Um, to do something big in the city for, for the young sure. people as well, because what you're doing here, like I said, it's amazing exactly. here. But if it's in the city and maybe Definitely. for other clubs, for other coaches, mm -hmm. for other organizations and other partners that could possibly come on board and support what you're doing, Absolutely. to do something big that that's reaches exa out. That's really. exactly what we're looking at and really ex extending the reach that Alan and Drew can get out to. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're actually, we're having some, we've had some exciting conversations already since they've been here about some tours that I'll be planning uh, throughout Europe, uh, but especially in, in, in England obviously it's a, it's a case that's very close to my heart. Um, so we're really keen to do, to do something in, uh, in London, do another event at another time of the year. Um, and I think you know the, the sort of exposure that major companies can, can get out of sponsoring an event such as that is unbelievable. I mean, in terms of the kids that we've had here, we've had over close to 200 players and coaches here, and that really is an outstanding number. So uh, you know the, the appeal of basketball to the, the roots it has in things such as urban culture, mm -hmm. music, and fashion. I mean, it really is a, a unique, unique, unique event to sponsor. So hopefully. We'll be able to do that. I'm very much look forward to making it happen. You're doing a great job. Thank I was you. going to cuss you out when I got out sure. of the car. I was like, I hope it's not full of American kids yeah, in yeah. that gym. Exactly. But I've been presently surprised. It's full of British kids. Definitely. The amazing coaches down there. I've seen my coach from when I was 11 years old sitting down there having a great time. So you're doing a great, great, great job. And I Thanks hope it much. goes on to become an amazing thing across the UK. I really that people appreciate can follow. that. Thank, thank you, you very much for having me. No, thank you for putting it on for the kids. No they, problem um, at all. They will just be saying thank you to you. I oh, appreciate that. <laughs>